This is a neural network, and we're going to build one from scratch to make a self-driving car AI. And from scratch, I mean no libraries or frameworks, just math and JavaScript. Why would you do this? Well, it's quite simple. I don't want peace. I want problems. Now, just like the beginning, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. We begin with the black canvas. Now, the car in question is just a rectangle. I know, I tried to make a Tesla, it didn't work. But instead of just drawing one directly, we're going to construct it using four lines. This is so later when we make the AI, we can tell when the car gets damaged using line intersections. As for the movement, there are four variables to work with. The car's position, angle, velocity, and friction. The angle determines the car's rotation. We increase the velocity vector by the angle the car is facing. Then we add friction so we can stop the car from moving by reducing the velocity by a certain fraction in each frame. And finally, we increment the car's position by the velocity. And we have a, mo we have a moving car. So far, so good. Next, we need like an actual track for the car to drive around. I want to make the most insane, wrist-bending, diabolical track known to mankind. But if I were to code it by hand, we're going to be here all day. So we need a map editor. Luckily, in my making a horror game video, which no one watched by the way, I actually made one. Surprisingly. So I'm just going to yoink that code. What, what do you think? I was going to write the whole thing from scratch again? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually reused the code. I just had to make a few tweaks here and there, and voila. Well, I still have to make the actual track. I want to push the limits of the AI, so I'm going to add as many curves and turns as possible. Pretty sick. Now let's get to the juicy parts, building the AI. We're going to be using a neural network and genetic algorithms to train the AI. Neural networks are designed to mimic the human brain. They contain a bunch of neurons, 86 billion to be exact that learn to activate or deactivate based on events that happens. Yo, Divine, heads up. A lot happened in that split second. The first signal was the call. I heard my name, so my ear gets the signal and sends it to my brain. The outputs, my neck turns towards that direction. The next signal is my eyes. I noticed an object coming fast from that direction. The eyes sends the signal to the brain and it processes the object. Stuff like what the object is, is it dangerous, is it not dangerous, etc. And all this is determined based on historical data gathered from past experiences. The final output being either to catch or dodge the object. I tried to catch but wasn't fast enough so the object hit me. The brain then takes this information and configures itself so next time it doesn't happen again. Hopefully. Long story short, it's the basis of how we learn to do anything. In computers, it's the same idea except it's just math. Looks scary, I know. But just think of it like a giant function. Takes in inputs and gives out an output. Difference being you don't write the logic of the function, the network learns to do it for you. How does it do that? Well, it uses something called weights and biases. A network consists of many neurons, and each neuron has a weight associated with it. The weight scales the input by multiplying itself with it to tell us how important the input is. The bias is a threshold that helps the neuron to decide when to activate. So multiply inputs by weights, sum it all together, add the bias, and you get the outputs. The whole idea is to keep turning the weights and biases until the desired output is given. Now imagine instead of just one neuron, we have hundreds of them, each interconnected and separated into layers, starting from the first layer, the hidden layer, and the output layer, each neuron being the weighted sum of the previous layer. You get something quite powerful, but what exactly would be the inputs? I was getting to that. The inputs are going to be what the car sees each frame. So we basically need to make some kind of way for the car to visualize the road in front of it. And we do that by recasting. Recasting is basically just finding the point of intersection between two lines. The idea is to cast the ray from the front of the car all the way to a finite length and then check what point the ray intersects with the road. The formula looks like this and the code looks like this. The part of intersection would then be our inputs. Well, at least one of them, because we're going to cast multiple rays within a field of view with each ray's point of intersection being an input for the network. As for the outputs, it will be just our movement controls. I have actually made ray castings in the past, so coding this up was quite straightforward. It looks good. If we look at the console, we can actually see the points of intersections. So this will be our inputs. Side note for the nerds watching this, we're not going to be using fancy algorithms for activation, because we actually don't need it in this case. Our genetic algorithm will be using mutation and natural selection. We don't need fancy backpropagation and checking will be messed up. We just keep evolving each generation. So no sigmoid, no relo, just this. Now, what the heck is a genetic algorithm? Say, for example, you want a baby that can do a backflip. You train it by making a bunch of babies and have them try out random movements. After a period of time, you pick the baby that was closest to doing a backflip and discard the rest. You then make copies of that baby for the next generation. You make them do the same thing, take the best one for the next generation, and you just keep repeating this process till you have a baby that can do a pretty sick backflip. Actually, I feel this should be a normalized way of raising kids. Now, using this logic, we're going to be making a bunch of cars, with our goal being to get to the end of the track as fast as possible without crashing. Pretty straightforward. 
We also need a way to tell which cars are doing well so we can pick the best one for each generation. We do this by creating something called a fitness function. Basically, a fitness function evaluates how each car is doing by giving them a score every frame. In our case, we want to encourage the cars that go furthest to the right in the shortest amount of time, while eliminating any cars that crash or stay idle for too long. However, gets to the end is still the main goal. So we're going to make the distance travel that counts for 90% of the fitness score and time span takes the remaining 10%. Coding this up was quite tricky, but I'm just going to pretend it was straightforward and spare you the details. Alright, let's run it and see. The funny thing about simulating hundreds of cars is it always finds a way to break your collision detection. I spent a lot more time fixing that than I anticipated, but I got to work just fine. They start off really stupid at the beginning, because they're mostly just moving randomly, but over time they start getting a grasp of what they should and shouldn't do. At some point I noticed they kept getting stuck at this exact spot and not making any progress. I couldn't exactly figure out why, so I just tried random adjustments like adding more rays for more inputs, increasing its FOV. I also adjusted the fitness function so it prioritizes distance a bit more. And luckily I started seeing progress. <laughs> We did it. If you leave it long enough, they start driving faster to try and get a better score. I was actually worried they wouldn't learn to take left turns because they're only encouraged to move right. I remember Code Bullet had to add some reward pickups in his AI just to encourage them to take those backward paths, but it actually learned to do that on its own, which was a pleasant surprise. This video was heavily inspired by the legendary programmer Rado. He has an entire series on self driving car AI where he takes his projects to like a whole new level. His stuff is just wizardry and the guy is insanely underrated. Probably would have taken me much longer to finish this without his videos, so please check him out. Anyways, that's all I have. As usual, the source code will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and always remember, I love you, but God loves you much more.